What is up guys, Call here. Today we're down in the workshop having a look at the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. This is the latest model in their entry series. And being a Sonic, it also has a mono screen. So you have curing times down to two seconds. Being the 4K version, of course it comes with a UHD screen so you have even crisper prints. This is my first resin printer, so I got a lot of things to learn about resin setup, exposure times, support structures. But I thought I'd share my thoughts on this being my first printer, what comes in the box, what could be improved, and uh, show you some prints I've done so far. So uh, let's jump into it and uh, have a look at it. Taking a look at the printer itself, it's a quite compact unit being 25 by 25 by 33 centimeters. In the box, it comes packaged with some thick, soft foam, so should be well protected when it comes to you. The lid itself is the standard plastic lid that you've seen on similar entry level machines. This one also has the problem with resin being transferred from your gloves when you take it on and off. And even though I cleaned the lid, I can't seem to get these removed. The lid is also not particularly firmly stuck on it. Of course it will protect you against or protect the resin against the UV rays from any light source, but being that it's not stuck it can easily come off. And as you saw, if you don't put it on the right way it might not seat properly. There's no filtration unit, even though there's a fan in the bottom. Um, but what I would like to see is a small fan just pulling out the fumes from the resin. And of course, keeping that contained. It has a LCD touch display, so you can press whatever if you want to print or settings and so on. Quite clear and bright view. You can also see the model when you're going to print it. On the side you have a air inlet along with your USB port and on the back you have a extraction fan power and power in. Nothing on the other side. The build volume is 130 by 73 by 130. Comes with a aluminium vat as well as a aluminium build plate and this one has the two screws holding it down so you can't slot it in from the side. What I would like to see on the vat is a cutout for a spout so when you try to pour out the old ones it doesn't drip back on the side here but that's no huge issue. The FEP sheet comes pre-installed so you should be able to get going as soon as possible. The build plate comes off pretty easily. One screw at the top with two guiding bolts on uh, the back here and it has the four screw alignment setup. This one is quite tight so I have to loosen the screws and uh, be careful not to press it too close to the LCD display. On the back you'll see the lead screw and also a linear bearing. It has the standard optical sensor for your C height. Having a look at the accessories, you get the manual, you get a funnel for removing any used resin from your vat, you get a sanding disc for flattening out your build plate, you get two additional screws for your build plate adjustment if you lose those, you get a metal spatula, a plastic spatula, a Allen key and a USB that includes sheet of box, the settings for the printer and a test file so you can get going straight away. What I've done is also include a angled USB extension because I want to be able to reach it from the front but it's a good thing that it doesn't have the port on the front in case you were to spill the vat when you removed it. What I also did was replace the 
spatula that's included, metal one, because it is quite thick, it is sharp, but it's also dull. So it makes it harder to remove, especially small prints. What I did was to get a hobbying modeling spatula. This one is thinner, it's also rounded and quite flexible. And this has made it really easy to get those prints off. Of course, you get the power adapter that's plugged into the printer right now. A side note about the vat, there are no indicators how much you fill up, so be sure that you don't overfill and spill it all over your printer. So now let's have a look at the display interface. As you can hear or not hear, there are no fans turning when it's in idle mode. They will automatically go on and off to cool the printer during its printing. But when it's just stationary, it's pretty quiet. Having a look at the interface, you have a info screen where you can turn on and off the beeper and you will hear the beeper once the print starts. You also have some tools where you can manually control the build plate. You can do a LCD test to see that the LCD works properly. See calibration for adjusting your build plate and the VAT cleaning for cleaning out the VAT and FEP. The print, of course, reads from the USB on the side. And here you can see the files that are on that memory card. If there are more, you can scroll up and down. And of course, you can click back if you want. If you open a print, you will see a short little view of it. You can delete it. You can go back or you can press go. And this interface will update with each layer. Of course, you have a stop, pause and settings. Here you can see the settings for this particular print. It also shows you how much time there's left, how much time has passed and which layer it is on. This is the fan speed. It's constant when it's on, so it's not louder or quieter than this. And that's the beeper when it turns on, turns off, or other indications. So let's let the print go through and uh, we'll see the results in a bit. And now that the build is done, let's remove the lid. And since the top of the build plate is sloped, most of the resin has already poured off. If you just tilt it to the side, you can get an extra drop or two back. There's the print done. So that was a quick little look at the Frozen Sonic Mini 4K. I think it's a really good machine if you want to get into resin printing. Its size, capabilities and price makes it a really well-run package, especially for beginners. They go for about $330 on the website. They're still shipping out pre-orders, but hopefully you can get one soon as well. I will have a link down below if you want to check out the machine on their web. Have you got the printer yourself or looking at it? Please share your thoughts in the comment below. And I will see you next time.